short-term rentals in Australia. Should I put my property on Airbnb or another short-term rental? Or should I just keep my property rented out on a long-term basis? This is a common question that we get asked by many investors or many Australian expats looking at investing in Australian property. Sometimes it's driven by wanting to have a holiday property and therefore the short-term rental makes sense. They can go back and stay in that property when it's not rented out and the rest of the year it's rented out on a short-term basis. And for others, it's really just looking at getting a superior yield. They've seen some ads on Facebook or wherever it may be and think that the returns look great. What is often ignored are all of the additional costs, both to get it ready for short-term rental and the ongoing expense. So in this video, we're going to uncover a few of those to give you a sense of what you need to be mindful of. Hi there, Jared Brown here, Australian expat financial planner. In this video, we're unpacking some of the additional costs when it comes to owning a property that you're putting on short-term rental. First and foremost, we have the upfront costs. If you consider a typical investment property, what you're typically providing the tenant is the shell. There's usually white goods, there's the bedrooms, but there's very rarely furniture. So we don't have all of that additional cost they're usually going to bring their own furniture in, as is commonly the case in Australia, their own beds, their own tables, their own furniture, their own belongings to make it feel like their home. When it comes to an Airbnb or a short-term rental, we need to take care of all of that furnishing ourselves. Depending on the area, that may be quite expensive. Now, if we're looking at a small apartment, we might be looking at 15 to 20,000. If we're looking at something that's a bit bigger, that could very easily be thirty dollars to $50,000 to actually set that up and get it ready for that short-term rental. Now, number two, when it comes to the actual setup costs, is really the ongoing sort of management or engagement to try and work out exactly how your property is priced or should be priced, and of course, getting the reviews. Like any new business or new startup or new service, you need to be able to get those tenants staying in the property, getting the reviews so that other people feel comfortable to do the same. That could mean that for the first three or six or 12 months, you're actually generating far less income than you thought when it comes to that property. So of course, just be very mindful of those setup costs and make sure you're factoring those into the overall yield. Then of course, we have the ongoing costs. Now these are plentiful and one important one to be mindful of and to check at any given time is the state-based additional fees. Some states are considering and have already imposed additional fees, fines, penalties, charges, whatever you want to call them, effectively costs to have your property on a short-term rental. Or they've capped the number of days each year you're allowed to have that property on a short-term rental basis. So of course, do your homework on that one and make sure you're factoring that cost in. Then of course, we have insurance. Now, depending on the service you're listing the property on, Many insurers will have this option as a short-term stay sort of insurance policy. Now, obviously, in many cases, that will cost a bit more than your standard property insurance. So we need to be very mindful of that one. Number two, our things get stolen. It is very common for cutlery to go missing, <coughs> for different things to go missing from your property. Now, that may not be a huge cost, but it is going to be an additional running cost. If somebody is staying in a property, uh, that they brought all their own furniture in, obviously they're not going to steal that. But even if they're staying in a property for two years and you've provided some furniture for them, it's very unlikely that that is going to be stolen given they're going to be there for the long run. So when it comes to the short-term stay, factor that in. Then of course we have the replacement, the upkeep of those items. Towels, linens, general bedding, these things need to be replaced potentially every six or 12 months. Given how frequently they're going to be cleaned and washed, naturally there is upkeep for those items. We then, of course, have the cleaning fees. Naturally, the property needs to be cleaned on a regular basis, and there will be the usual maintenance of the property. The gardens, the cleaning, we may need general upkeep for the property, it may need to be repainted. Now, those costs are not necessarily dissimilar to a normal investment property, so that may not be an additional cost. We then of course have the platform fees themselves. So we need to be very mindful of what that looks like, how those costs are calculated, whether there are surcharges at certain times, 
how those fees are paid, and of course, whether those fees differ based on the ownership structure of your property. Now, there is no one size fits all when it comes to should you have a property on short-term or long-term rental, and in some cases, a short-term rental can genuinely deliver a much better result when it comes to yield. But that is not always the case, and we do need to go into these decisions with eyes wide open. So run your numbers, do your homework up front, make sure the investment stacks up and aligns with your own financial goals before you dive in. Thank you for tuning in. Drop me a note with any questions you've got. Uh, leave your questions, comments below, and do remember to like, subscribe to the channel. I look forward to seeing you in the next one.